All right, hello friends. We are going to discuss the elbow in the forearm region in terms of the joints. And there's quite a few more joints in this region than say we had in the shoulder. We're not only gonna talk about the three main joints around specifically the elbow, but we're also gonna move a little bit distally in order to talk about uh, joints that are associated with the forearm. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm a very big fan of this particular region because it has this really cool area when we're talking about joints in the elbow region that have three different articulations, so three different joints, all in one articular capsule. And I think that is just super neat. So in, um, in real life with all the soft tissue kind of around, you would have a joint capsule that kind of goes along this entire region right here. And so it would come around on the sides as well as anteriorly and posteriorly. So it would encompass all three different articulations. And those are the humeral ulnar joint, which you can see right here. So this one is the humeral ulnar. ulnar. And I know this is humeral ulnar because this is the trochlea right here. This is the ulna right here. And also just because I'm around this region, this side is the radius. So ulna and radi radius, the ulna is always medial. Also you can tell because the medial epicondyle is always larger than the lateral epicondyle. So you know your medial here and your lateral here. So when you're talking about the humeral ulnar joint, which also oftentimes people will refer to as the true elbow joint, this is between the trochlea and the olecranon fossa of the humerus. The olecranon fossa is on the posterior side, so you can't see it well here. This is trochlea. And then the trochlear notch is where this trochlea is sitting in, and that is of the ulna. This is the true joint, um, true, excuse me, hinge joint. So this is uh, going to be the main force in terms of that flexion and extension movement that you have at the elbow. The humeroradial joint that is going to be located right here. So this is between the capitulum. So this is the capitulum, this more uh, robust region than the more spool-shaped trochlea. Um, and then it's also going to articulate with the radial head, which is right here under this ligament here. So the radial head is one of my favorite osteological structures. It's this very cute kind of button, uh, button size and button-like uh, structure that is going to articulate with the capitulum. This is also a hinge joint and it just plays a role in terms of the overall function of the true elbow joint. Also wrapped up within the, within the capsule is the first of the three joints associated with the radius and the ulna. So the radius and the ulna are going to articulate in three different places. There'll be a proximal and a distal radial ulnar joint, and then there'll be an intermediate radial ulnar joint that we'll talk about in a moment. The one that's going to be wrapped up within this articular capsule is going to be the proximal radial ulnar joint. And you can see here, and I've already labeled it, the, rad the radial head, that nice button-shaped structure right here, is going to articulate with the radial notch of the ulna. And so that radial head will sit right there and what it will do is pivot. And this pivoting will allow pronation and supination when working with the distal radial ulnar joint to occur. And, we'll talk, and you talk, we talked a little bit about pronation and supination in the active learning session uh, associated with joints. So that is going to be this articulation right here. So you have three joints all wrapped up in one. Humeral ulnar, humeral radial, and then the proximal radial ulna right here. And just a few tricks of the trade in terms of being able, when you look at an image like this, or if you are in a dissection and trying to tell which side is medial and which side is lateral, always remember ulna is medial, radius is lateral. And we know we're looking at an anterior view here because you cannot see the large olecranon fossa, which is always posterior. So that, so we're looking at an anterior view here. Okay, now moving on to some of the ligaments associated with the joints in this region. 
you're going to have on either side collateral ligaments. Anytime you hear the term collateral ligaments, I want you to think it's going to be kind of flanking the joint, and that's exactly what's going on here. Now the radial collateral ligament is going to be this one that is going to be shaded in yellow. It is going to be an extrinsic ligament, so you can see that here. It is, um, we know this is on the, this is the radial collateral ligament because you can see the radius here. So it makes sense, it's going to attach from the humerus to the radius, so radial collateral ligament. Another thing I want to note, if you look over here in terms of the terminology, is that I have here radial collateral ligament of elbow. This is an important thing to note because even though you can look at this and be pretty sure that you're not looking at the wrist, be aware that there is a radial and an ulnar collateral ligament of the wrist. So when you're writing out the terminology, you need to be specific in terms of, of the elbow. On the other side here, uh, so this is the ulna, so it makes sense for this to be the ulnar collateral ligament. And this one is a little bit wider, um, and it is going to be an intrinsic, so kind of going to be a thickening of the articular capsule on this side, so ulnar collateral ligament here. And then shaded in this pink color, this is going to be the annular ligament. Sometimes you see it spelled A-N-N-U-L-A-R. Uh, we are going by what's going to be the most recent in terms of the Terminologica Anatomica. So we spell it with one N. Not a big deal, but you'll see it both ways. And what you see, and as the name would suggest, this annular ligament is going to surround the, the head of the radius. So it's going to surround the head of the radius, and then it's going to head over to that radial notch of the ulna in order to allow, in order to kind of cover around that proximal radial ulnar joint. So if we go back to this image right here, you can see it without it being shaded, it's going to be this region right around here. So this is that annular ligament. And it's that nice kind of shiny material that looks like an articular capsule, um, but it is going to be specifically the ligament because you know it's surrounding that radial head. Okay, now moving distally, we're getting to that second articulation between the radius and the ulna, and this is the radial ulnar syndesmosis. And oftentimes this is just referred to as the interosseous membrane of the forearm. Same thing. It is this region right here where we have the connection between, this is the radius, this is the ulna, and this huge sheet of fibrous tissue this fairly expansive sheet right here is the interosseous membrane. So what is happening is that you're having an articulation between the two shafts of the bone. Now remember this term from our, the active learning session and from your learning objectives, the syndesmosis. This is going to be a fibrous joint. So we are not talking a synovial joint here. This is one of the few examples of talking about a specific joint uh, that is not synovial. It's not cartilaginous either. It's going to be made up of fibrous connective tissue, dense, regular and dense irregular connective tissue. And it's a fairly expansive sheet. This is going to allow for the movement that occurs at the proximal and the distal radial ulnar joints for that pronation and supination, or the rotation of the radius along the ulna. And then last but not least, we have the distal radial ulnar joint. So, um, this is fairly similar to what we had with the proximal radial ulnar joint. You can see, uh, if you recall in terms of learning your osteology, the radius will actually get wider as you get more distal, whereas the opposite happens with the ulna. The ulna is very wide when you're more proximal, associated with the elbow region, and becomes significantly uh, significantly kind of skinnier as you move down to this region. So your distal radial ulnar joint is this articulation between the ulna and the ulnar notch of the radius, and this, this too is a pivot joint allowing for pronation and supination to occur. And this is before we get down to the true wrist joint or the radiocarpal joint. All right, so those are the main joints associated with the elbow as well as the forearm. 
and then we'll have a separate video where we talk about the specifics associated with the wrist joint or the radiocarpal joint. As always, please, please feel free to ask any questions, and please have a good rest of your day.